welcome to Google I.O. So we are pushing ourselves really hard so that Google is evolving and staying a step ahead of our users. This is why we are evolving search to be much more assistive. So today we are announcing the Google Assistant. We think of the Assistant in a very specific way. We think of it as a conversational assistant. We want users to have an ongoing two-way dialogue with Google. You can ask Google, who directed the Revenant? The Revenant was directed by Alejandro Gonzalez in Eritu. And you can follow that up with the question, show me his awards. Notice that I didn't say the name, which I'm glad because I find that name very, very hard to pronounce. And Google could pick that conversation up and return the right answer. So we've been thinking hard about, about how to bring this vision of Google Assistant into your home. To give you a preview, I'm going to invite Mario from the Chromecast team. Today we want to give you an early preview of how we're bringing the Google Assistant to the home. This is why we're creating Google Home, a device which will be available later this year. Google Home lets you enjoy music and entertainment throughout your entire house, manage everyday tasks more easily, and ask Google what you want to know. With Google Home, we set out to create and design a beautiful product that's warm and inviting and fits naturally in many areas of the home. We think it'll be a beautiful addition to any room in your house. And we're even more excited about what it's going to do for you. Google Home will be available later this year. Another core use case on users' phones is communications. But given our advancements in machine learning, we wanted to approach this core use case with a new perspective. Eric Kai is going to join to talk to you more about it. Communications is all about sharing life's moments. So today, we're giving you a look at what we've been up to with two new communication apps that show what's possible when we bring Google technology to this essential human activity. The first is a new messaging app called Allo. Allo is a smart messaging app. It learns over time to make conversations easier, more expressive, and more productive. We designed Allo to help you express yourself and keep the conversation going. Let's look at Whisper Shout. Rather than tapping the send button, he slides it down to whisper and slides it up again to shout. So down to whisper and up again to shout. Another way Allo helps you express yourself is by letting you type less. When Joy asks, dinner later, that Amin has offered two smart reply suggestions. I'm busy and I'm in. The more you use Allo, the better the suggestions will become. Now I want to show you something really cool. Allo even offers smart replies when people send photos to you. The intelligence behind Smart Reply also gives you a taste at how assistive technology can make your message experience simpler and more productive. The Google Assistant, built right into Allo, takes it even farther. So I'm pleased to introduce one of our leads, Rebecca, to tell you more about the Assistant in Allo. So as you heard earlier, the Google Assistant is an ongoing dialogue between you and Google that helps you get things done in your world. So I'm going to show you how the Assistant can help in Amit and Joy's conversation. The assistant intelligently recognizes that they could use some tips for Italian restaurants nearby. And you can see its proactive suggestion at the bottom of the screen there. In Allo, Amit and Joy could choose and reserve a restaurant right there in the chat in a natural and seamless way. You can also have a one-on-one -on -one chat with Google. Amit's a big Real Madrid fan, and he wants to know how they got on in their last match. So he asks the assistant, did my team win? Looks like they did. And we can keep going like this and find more news about the team um, just by tapping on the suggestions there. So that was the assistant in Allo. Allo is all about messaging. But let me talk to you a minute about video calling. So I'd like to introduce you to Duo, a simple one-to-one -one video calling app for everyone. Duo is the video, call video companion to Allo. It's fast and performs well even on slow networks and it works on both Android and iOS. But here's a feature that makes Allo really special. Knock Knock shows you a live video stream of the caller before you've even picked up. So as you can see, and Elena apparently too is popping in there. <laughs> I haven't even picked up yet, but Ava's right there, smiling and making funny faces. I can tell she's really eager to talk, so let's answer it. Hi, Dad. Hi, Ava. Hi, Hi Elena. <laughs> 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 
Oops. Both Allo and Duo will be available this summer on Android and iOS. To talk to you about a bit about Android, I'd like to invite to the stage our resident rock star, Dave Burke. Android is the most popular OS in the world. So let's talk about what's new in the platform. Let's jump straight in and talk about some of the biggest changes in N around performance, security, and productivity. With N, we're making our biggest leap forward with the introduction of Vulkan. Vulkan is a modern 3D graphics API designed to give game developers direct control of the GPU to produce incredible graphics and compute performance. Second, we've added a new just-in-time, or JIT, compiler. And JIT comp compilation means that app installs are much faster, 75% faster in N. So now users can get up and running in your apps much more quickly. With N, we're continuing to strengthen our defenses in three key ways. First, N introduces file-based encryption. Second, we learned the importance last year of hardening the security of the media framework. Third, N automatically keeps your phone up to date with the latest version of the system software without you having to do anything. And that pesky Android is upgrading dialogue is finally gone. A third area of focus for us is our continued effort to improve productivity. So we decided to simplify by automatically removing apps in the list that you haven't used in a while. Also, based on popular demand, we finally added a clear all button at the top. Notifications is another area we've worked on to improve productivity in Android. We've added a new direct reply feature, which lets you quickly reply to a message like so. And Android is the first mobile platform to support the new Unicode 9 emoji standard. Unicode 9 also brings 72 new emoji glyphs. So now you can let your friends know, for example, when you're dancing like the left shark while juggling and eating avocado toast in order to win first prize in that selfie contest. <laughs> We're still putting the final touches on the end release, and we expect to launch it later this summer. There's one more area in N that we've been working hard on that we haven't talked about yet. And to tell you more about what it is, let me invite up Clay Bavor. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm Clay Bavor, and I lead the virtual reality team at Google. And yeah, just to get right to it, virtual reality is coming to Android N. Now, what we've built won't be available until this fall, but we'd like to introduce you to it today. We call it Daydream. Daydream is our platform for high-quality mobile virtual reality, and in it are all of the ingredients you need to create incredible immersive VR experiences. So we've introduced what we call VR mode as part of Android N. We've worked at all levels of the Android stack to optimize it for VR. Now, this is obvious, but a, a VR headset, it's something that you wear. It has to have great optics, has to be comfortable, but the controller, how you interact with VR, it's just as important. Let's have a look. That's it for VR and Android. To tell you about wearables in Android, I'd like to turn it over to David Singleton. And today, I'm sharing a preview of our biggest platform update yet, Android Wear 2.0. We know that the most important role of your watch is helping you stay connected to what matters. And that's why we're evolving the platform to build even better experiences for the watch face, messaging, and fitness. With Android Wear 2.0, apps can be standalone. That means the apps on your watch can have direct network access to the cloud. And that means a fast, and richer on-watch app experience for both Android and iPhone users. Starting today, developers can download a preview of Android Wear 2.0, and everyone will be able to enjoy these exciting new watch experiences in the fall. Hi, everybody. I'm Ellie from the Android team. We'll be showing you a sneak peek of a new project. We're evolving Android apps to run instantly without installation. We call this Android Instant Apps. B&H Photo and Video has a beautiful Android app, but I don't have it on my phone because I don't shop for cameras every day. With one tap, the app opens up right to the bag I want to buy. I can also swipe here and see more details about the bag. You should know that Instant Apps is going to be compatible all the way back to Jelly Bean. And with that, I'll hand it back to Sundar. Things previously thought to be impossible may in fact be possible. We look forward to building this future together with all of you. 
Thank you for joining us at Google I.O.